Hi friends, we've been here before and we're back again on the grounds of Wall Street Occupied, as you can see. Uh, I can recognize some familiar faces from the last time we've been here. Some people approach our camp just to express their opinion. And also, uh, we approach several people that they're willing just to come back and give us a little bit of the uh, progress and perhaps the evolution of this movement. Uh, we'll be here for the rest of the day, and we want to bring this uncensored, uncut, the way you, we see it, you will see it. Yeah, Jonathan, uh, good morning to you behind the camera. Yeah. Is there anything you want to ask this gentleman this morning? Hey, any purpose you have here today? Uh, I'm here to fight for economic justice. Economic All right. justice? Okay. That's correct. All right, so. How do you think what would, be, what do you think, what would be the solution? Well, you know, it's funny because the media keeps asking that. And, you know, we've got a question for the media. We have cast the stone in the middle of the pond and caused the ripples. I think now the question is, what are you going to do? Right. We are actually trying to bring this to the people. No, no, in the I same understand. way you this and that sure, to us. Sure, But I'm talking you know. to the broader audience of right. your viewers. Okay. You know, what are you going to do? How are you going to vote? How are you going to spend your money? How right. are you going to legislate the future? I mean, do you think 300 people in the park can change the entire society, or do you think we might need a little help from the rest of our 99% of our friends? Well, that's your purpose. Right? Yeah. Just to spread the uh, spread the, news. the word. Right. That's spread right. right. What would you right. like to see? Campaign finance reform, education reform, uh, technologies that lead to environmental sustainability. I mean, there's a lot of things. I mean, we've got five decades of worker exploitation that we're dealing with. There's a lot of there's a lot of things that need to be taken care of. Do you agree? Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's a magic bullet. Yeah. yeah. Do you think, uh, um, if, if you don't mind me asking you a couple of questions, uh, well, absolutely. Subject, do you think that government is the answer to the problem? Do you think big government is the answer? Like more government programs? And, uh, I can't speak on behalf of the camp on this on this response because it's not exactly con consistent with my fellow campers. I personally do think big government is the answer. I think that when you've got 15% uh, unemployment, which is what we're really looking at when we talk about the people who aren't uh, on, on the rolls, uh, when you're dealing with 15% unemployment, you're talking about workers that are uh, having their benefit packages shrinking, their wages shrinking, that when you have the government offering jobs which uh, rebuild our infrastructure, which uh, redevelop our schools, which provide safety in uh, impoverished neighborhoods, you then have a situation where the free market must compete against the government. They, uh, a person doesn't have to go take a minimum wage job. They have an option of doing something benefiting our society. This puts the, uh, the ball back into the uh, employer's hands to offer better benefits, increase wages. So yes, I do think big government is the answer. That is not the answer that I think you would find consistently in the country. Uh, good morning again. Uh, we are uh, enjoying the good weather so we can stand here. As we have the background of the people that actually demonstrated today. You know, that would be a good frame for us to, to actually introduce my friend Willie House, which is one of the founders of the last trumpet. How are you today, Mr. Hudson? I'm doing better than we deserve, Victor. How are you today? Doing well. Listen, I'd like to ask you a few questions. So yes. I want to uh, bring you back 31 years ago. When, uh, how did you come up with the idea of the last trumpet? Well, all I can say is he's a God in heaven. It really has nothing to do with us. He gets the credit if there is any credit to be given. Right, um, what but, was your first motivation, actually, to okay. bring this into in, into a into a, uh, into a tool? I should say, right? Well, uh, to make it uh, to explain it briefly. Uh, I was visiting uh, a young lady in college, her roommate was a born-again Christian, and she recommended that I read this book called The Late Great Planet Earth. Uh, I remember we were supposed to uh, go to a basketball game, we went to the bookstore, got the book, basketball game, came back, I stayed up almost all night and read the book. Uh, then I went back to New Jersey and uh, I started preaching, I really had no idea what I was talking about, to say the least. But it just really caught my attention, uh, that particular book, The Late Great Planet Earth, was uh, New York Times number one bestseller for the decade of the 70s, non-fiction number one bestseller for the entire decade. 
Uh, Dave Wilkinson, a gentleman who started Teen Challenge, uh, had published a newspaper, an eight-page paper, very similar to what we had. Hello. <laughs> and um, it was only on the second coming of Christ, the rapture. And we were in the process of studying uh, the prophecies concerning the second coming of Christ. And we decided to put together a newspaper called The Last Trumpet. Uh, there was a gentleman, uh, Dan O'Connell, another friend, uh, Rob Smith, my brother, myself. And we worked on it, we put it together. And basically we wanted to dramatize what the Bible says is going to happen. Uh, Prior to the second coming right. of Christ, you, you're following. You're trying to follow a parallel with the Bible prophecies. Yes. And uh, as I've been with you guys, I mean, I'm not one of the founders, but I, I know you from a long time, and I can see the parallels been built, building up. You know, even as we speak in our watch. You know, can you give us a little bit of a, a highlight of what's going on right now? Well, before I give you a highlight, of what's going on right now, I'd like to go back. Uh, the reason you can believe the Bible is true concerning uh, the inspiration of God. Uh, my brother and I, uh, I'll back up, I went to a Bible study. There was a man at the Bible study. He happened to have his uh, Bible open. I'm looking over his shoulder. I read a chart in the back of his Bible that said, Prophecies of the Messiah fulfilled in Jesus Christ. I, I don't remember the exact sensation I got. It was either goosebumps or chills. But when I saw the fact that Jesus' life was predicted before he came, over 200 specific predictions. Uh, it, it really floored me. And my brother and I spent about a year and a half studying the, the prophecies of the first coming of Christ. We searched uh, diligently the Old Testament. We spoke to Jewish rabbis. We really did an in-depth study. Right. It is undeniable. Once you get into it, into the Bible prophecies, you cannot stop. Because it's the Word of God. Yesterday, today, and forever. That's why the paper stand stood actually 31 years, you know, being unchangeable, even with all that amendments of the changes in the printings and the phones, you know, and uh, today news run from one corner to the to the other, you know, very fast. But the uh, last trumpet stood the days of time, you know, like uh, as a uh, evangelical tool. Uh, I, I know for a fact that these uh, editions, uh, after successive uh, reprintings, you know, it's been all over, all over the world, and uh, hundreds of thousands. <laughs> You know, uh, the, just a, a note, the Jewish people, when Jesus came the first time, were so focused on the glorious prophecies of the second coming of the Messiah, they totally missed the first coming, the majority of the Jewish people. Now the church is falling into the same trap. They're so involved with the first coming of Christ, the second coming is right upon them, and the majority of people are unaware. My brother, uh, basically, years ago, used to buy these books, the Lake Great Planet Earth, and hand them out by the hundreds. And so, uh, and many people will not read the whole book. So that we decided to put together an eight-page publication to basically summarize the prophecies in the Bible that uh, would inform people and, and hopefully uh, help them to understand that uh, we're in the last days. Right. Uh, let me just uh, throw a little question. What are we doing here? This is a uh, uh, demonstration, you know, against power. Mm -hmm. so, you know, these people call themselves the 99%, you know, uh, and they're protesting against the uh, tyranny of the older uh, one percent left. You know, uh, what, what do you have to say about that? Well, from the Bible's point of view, it's actually going to get worse. And unfortunately, these people are, are not aware of the fact. Is, is it a foreshadow that actually it actually uh, uh, stated in, in the paper that you can actually give us a little insight? Well, the Bible speaks about a man coming coming called the Antichrist, and uh, in Revelation it describes a, a one-world system where no one will be able to buy or sell without his control. And this is all leading up to that. So that means that things are happening. Just the fact that these people are demonstrated again, uh, actually against the, uh, an economic upheaval is the base of what we're actually looking at as a foreshadow. Right? Yes, because absolutely. That was, uh, absolutely. That parallel, yes. Right? You know, I would like to uh, also, uh, if you give me a minute, to bring your brother, because you, 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 your, your brother was also an artifice, a participant in this, uh, the creation of this newspaper, although you initiated it. Could you give me a minute? Sure. We'll be right back. This is for the uh, last trumpet of the news. We've been coming around and uh, talking candidly like we do to you. What's your name? Clint. Clint Selva. Tell us a little bit about this first day. How is it work? Um, come in sick and we heal you. <laughs> it's I pretty mean, simple. Who, who, is, who actually put this up? Um, it was like a, it was a working group. So we decided that uh, we were starting to get in donations like from band-aids and all that stuff. So we started to build up a working group of simple... Simple first aid that can help people, vitamins. I see. So, what are you doing here? 
Um, what's, what's your, uh, anything. What's anything. What's your take? Anything. What, you, what do you think? What, why are you coming here to? Uh, I mean, that's, that's a clear question. We've got to yeah. ask you who we are, too. Yeah, that's, um, I'm here because I'm a member of Anonymous and okay. and Melton Union, Local 614 Engineers Union. So I uh, really support unions so, heavily. So you're part of the uh, 99%? Yeah. Okay. Even though I do make decent money, <laughs> I'm proud of myself. But I understand there's other people that aren't like that, and I'm, I actually want the people just to be like me. In other words, you're reaching out for the people and that's to do for the system. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. No problem. So yeah, we are conversing with you a little while ago. We promised that we will come back, and we, we're back. That. So I greatly uh, appreciate that. So what do you have that. to say for yourself? Well, uh, my, my stance here is that I've literally been thrown out into the street and lost everything. That's why the government did this, is what the sign is. Despite eight doctors who all agree I can't work and should not work. You know, you, uh, do you know that you look like Richard uh, Dreyfuss, the actor? Th that could be good, because then maybe I could get a movie role out of this one of these days. But, uh, you know, and I've literally lost everything. So, uh, But it doesn't come to a lot of surprise to me, because it's the same government that beats up on senior citizens and children every time they're looking for money and uh, also sending troops to war and didn't even bother to buy them body armor so what that's my platform here and it's just there's just this tremendous disdain for the American public and uh, it's just horrible that uh, they blatantly disregard so much medical uh, evidence and how they would rather see somebody sleep out in the street and lose everything before you get your public assistance. Right. Uh, my question to you is, aren't you generalizing a bit to say that, that our soldiers don't have uh, protection and, well, and no. the government beats the old people, you know? Generalizing how? Well, exactly what I said. I mean, uh, uh, to me it sounds a little bit one-sided. Well, I don't know what, how many sides there has to be to a government that does just that. It's been, it's been proven time and time again. The, the, the military had to get on YouTube, make their own video, okay. have their parents raise funds to buy body armor, pull yeah. parts off of trucks. We all witnessed that. Right. Well, right. We, we all know every time they need money, they take money from senior citizens. Right, right. They, when senior citizens couldn't afford the prescription medication, they went up to Canada in droves by, by the busloads, and the government turns around and says, oh, you, you can't do that anymore. That's illegal to do that. So are you pro-government or against government? Uh, listen, you have to have a government. What it has to have is one that's, okay. that's not crooked. That's one that doesn't support the 1%. It's not about all rich people. It's about people who control right. things on Wall Street, uh, who manipulate prices in the banks and Wall Street, and the feds who, who let them do it. They, they, they can't do these things without federal law. It's it's horrific message that you send that seniors can barely live on what they get in the first place, and then they try to do something. When has the United States government ever told us we can't go somewhere and buy something? And then the feds, uh, then the uh, FDA tried to say, well, we're not sure of the quality of medicine in Canada. I mean, you know, Canadians aren't dropping dead of medicine, and and they certainly don't regulate anything in GNC, in GNC stores like vitamins and supplements. They they refuse to even regulate that stuff. So I don't think it's generalizing anything. There are hardcore facts that that's what they do. They want to take programs away from children every time they look for money. Well, you're burning both ends of the stick there. You're destroying the possibility of our children growing up intelligent and competing with places like Japan and India. And uh, then you're beating up on seniors that there's no prospect of growing old in this country. There's no golden years in this country anymore. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny thing that you actually mentioned Canada because I have elderly relatives in Canada and they're not better off than we are here. Okay, but their prescription evidently is less expensive. Yeah, that's and one. So, that, that, so that's what the only point was, that the government stepped in and said, oh, you right. can't go up there and do that when they're trying to go up there and save themselves. I'm not saying Canada has a better program or who does. I'm not a political expert or a financial expert. Right. So I couldn't tell you how to fix these things. I do know they're broken. You know, oh, right. you, so you, you, have, you have to admit there's something wrong here, and right. everybody that, that uh, holds a sign isn't going to have the answers. That's I wish right. I could. I wish I could say that's right. exactly what to do okay. and go there and do it. That was my next question. Oh, okay. I'm glad. Well, 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 I, well, I was part mind reader in a circus right. once. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, no, I tell you, you look like Richard Dreyfuss. Well, okay. Does anybody ever tell you you look like Richard Dreyfuss? Rich, a couple, uh, one, uh, just, uh, you know, a couple of times, and it's, it's, been, well, it's been lately, too. You hear that, Richard? I could be your stand-in. <laughs> thank you very much. Hey, no, Take thank care. you. Thank you, fellas. Thanks for coming back.
we are back in the uh, grounds of uh, Wall Street. Uh, today is Sunday, November 13th, 2011. I'm here with my friend David Hauser, one of the founders of the, founder of the Last Trumpet. Today is the last, last trumpet in the news. Right, David? That's right. That's right. Uh, now, you just spoke to my brother, and he detailed how the Last Trumpet came about. Now, if you take a look back here, we just uh, made this up. This is the original Last Trumpet, if you take a look, written in 1980. We just did a reprint in color. We added a website, which you can go to, and color pictures. Right. Contextually, the paper has not changed Iola. It's exactly the same thing. Correct. Because what? It is based on the Word of God. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, what happens is, we added color pictures, we added a website. Now, what happens is, when you look at this, you'll notice we reprinted it exactly. Now, what I'd like to show you is this. After we wrote the newspaper, we started seeing something unusual happen. We started seeing newspaper articles that came out that said the exact same thing on the exact same subject that you printed 31 years in the ago. exact same words. Now, we have a book here where we have the documentation. Now, it's going to be evidence that demands a verdict. We have 30 different articles that say the exact same thing on the exact same subject. Now, one in particular I want to show you, which is pretty involved. We have, this is from 1980, Europeans unite, they elect a president, they ratify a constitution, they guarantee Israel's security with the peace treaty, and we wrote the article from Brussels, Belgium, so that was 1980. Now, this is 1991, Europeans unite, European Union. Ratify the constitution, ratification of the constitution, guaranteeing Israel's security. Now, what's my reaction when in 2009 I read an article from the New York Times from Brussels, Belgium, where they talk about ratification, voting, and creating a permanent president of the European Union. What's my reaction? Chills head to toe. Now, forgive me if I'm a little enthusiastic, but it appears that God, the architect of the ages, has seen fit to take us into his confidence concerning his plan for the future and has revealed that plan in detail to the ancient Hebrew prophets. And he led us in on that. Now, to me, that is incredibly exciting. Now, absolutely. Now, this is interesting. People say, gee, Dave, how do I know it was written in 1980? Well, let's see. Here's some of the original photographs from 1980. Okay, two of the original photographs. Right. And here's some orders for the last trumpet from 1980. And here's some, if you look closely at the postmark, it's 1982, 1982. So we wrote this in 1980. Now, what's interesting, try to figure out how the lead story is European debt crisis. Japan trying to devalue the yen. The nations of the world trying to divide Jerusalem and Iran publicly threatening to destroy Israel. Now, those four things happen to be on the news this week. This is right in 1980. Now, how do you figure this out? When you get a chance, get a copy of the newspaper. We give them out for free. Yeah, by the way, you know, that that's a very good point. You know, physically, we're not going to be able to spread all this newspaper. Do me a favor. Can you quote the, uh, how the people can log on to order? Sure. Now, if they'd like to get a copy of the newspaper, you go to www. Now the end begins .com. www now the end begins .com. and if you would like a weekly update on Bible prophecy you can go to www John McTernan M C T E R N A N dot name that's www John McTernan dot name and that'll give you the weekly update now what's exciting when you read the paper you'll see European debt crisis Japan trying to devalue the yen. Iran threatening Israel, and the nation trying to divide Jerusalem. Those things are on the news this week. This was written in 1980. So we're down here at Wall Street. Now, the other interesting thing is this. There's a new monetary system coming where the global bankers are going to collapse the economy, introduce a cashless society. Paper currency will become worthless. And if you want to get that next cup of coffee, you're going to have to either use their barcode or their chip. David, let me interrupt for one second. Sure, sure. You know, 31 years ago, as I'm, not, I'm not one of the founders, but I was there behind you guys. Right. This looks like a uh, unfathomable. You right. sound that like ridiculous. People right. laugh in your face. Right. But today, if we put this arbiter as a prophetic tool right in the newsstand, people will see it. You don't even have to be spiritual right. to understand right. what's going on, right? Absolutely. Now, let me give you a little background. Twice a year, 17 years in a row, my partner, my brother Willie and I were invited to Massapequa High School and we gave a lecture to the senior class, a class called Contemporary Problems, and we gave a lecture on this subject. Now, 
at the high school, I would start the lecture with quotations from two famous people, and I would ask the kids who said this. Now, the first guy said this. He said, you know, I turn back to ancient prophets in the Old Testament and the signs foretelling Armageddon. I find myself wondering if we're the generation that is going to see that come about. Then he said, I don't know if you've noted any of those prophecies lately, but believe me, they certainly describe the times we're going through. Now, is that A, somebody down on 42nd Street with a little sign, the end is near, or B, President Ronald Reagan? Well, it was President Ronald Reagan. Now, next guy. Who said this? He said, everywhere you turn in Israel today, the Bible is coming to life. I'm not talking only about archaeological discoveries, but also about the international political scene as it affects us today. If you read the biblical prophecies about Armageddon in the end days, and look at the current realities in the world today, and especially the Middle East, things certainly begin to look familiar. The vast number of archaeological discoveries in Israel have all tended to vindicate the pictures that are presented in the Bible. If, therefore, the Bible has been proven true concerning the past, we should not look lightly at any prognostication or prediction it makes about the future. Now, is that A, somebody down on 42nd Street with the sign, the end is there, or B, President Haim Herzog, former president of Israel? Well, it's the former president of Israel. Now, we're going to recommend a book for everybody to read. David Ben-Gurion, the first prime minister of Israel, considered the chief architect of the nation of Israel, was reading a book right before he died. That book that I'm recommending it is in his room, and we recommend it in the paper. It's called The Late Great Planet Earth. It was written in 1970. It was the best-selling book of the 1970s. Remind me, if I want to order some papers, what do I find in the newspaper in the www? Okay. Oh, that's very good. Now, when you go to www.nowtheendbegins.com, scroll all the way down to the bottom on the left, and you'll see a full-size picture of the paper. You click it on. You can send us an email. Uh, describe how many papers you need. We send them out no charge, and we'll get them out right away for you. We also, you know, link to what another groups, Christian groups, where we uh, participate in their work, you know, spreading the, uh, the good news of the, of the gospel. And we would like to also put an invitation, so if I can use any one of our material, you know, uh, please uh, feel free, including this uh, last trump in the news Absolutely. This segment. I know that uh, we're all, all working for the same cause, right? Absolutely. That's it. Very good, guys. We'll be right back. We'll Thank you right much. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Wait, no, no, no. Can I get a haircut like that? Sure. Any help for me? No, you no. got the opposite. The opposite. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if we put it together, we got one head of hair. What do you yeah, think? We can do that. That'll work. That might work. There's a guy that does uh, heating in our building. <laughs> For that, you'll have to improve the future by putting your best thoughts on how to fix this Absolutely. broken system in the box. All right. Well, what we want to do is just give it to the people the way we take it and the way we see it. Why, why change it? You're gonna say it. Um, say it again. Wow, I didn't know I was gonna get on the spot. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's part of it, man. I like your hat. Well, well thank you. We put it this way. I said he wanted to, uh, he asked me, you know, what what if, what are we going to do to change the future? I said, well, listen, the only thing we can do is take it subjectively in this way and just present it to the public. Education, not indoctrination. Since 9-11, we have all been uh, hypnotized by trauma-based mind control. The world is as it is, not by mistake, but by design. And? That's it? Is that the end? Dude, I'm not on my soapbox. <laughs> I'm on the curb. I'm on the curb. Again, we're getting, uh, I want you to remember that you happen to be in the grounds of uh, Wall Street. This is for the last trumpet in the news. And your name is? Uh, Brad Thomas. Okay, what are you doing here? Well, uh, is maybe, you, oh, yes. maybe you have read my sign, but I, what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to uh, 
what I'm trying to bring out is uh, make people aware of there's a, what I consider an, an unholy alliance between Wall Street and Washington, where rich people, lobbyists, and corporations through the election process donate, can't make campaign contributions to people so they can get elected. Now, the people making these contributions, they're savvy investors and they want to return on their money. So they look to the officials to change laws to make these laws in their interests, just like the financial meltdown that has recently occurred. And it started through deregulation under Bill Clinton. Five years prior to deregulation, the financial industry invested hundreds of millions of dollars to get elected officials to change the laws. And since then, we had the savings and loan crisis. We had long-term capital. As most recently, we had MF capital under John Corzine. 1,100 people lost their jobs yesterday. How long have you been here? Today, about an hour and a half. It's about my fifth time down. I see. Well, how do you think this movement gone into? I hope it continues. I tend to think that at some point in time for it to continue and to flourish, it will need leaders. Um, I don't know how long a leader, leaderless movement, hopefully it's not a moment, uh, can last. Although the media is showing some leadership rising up. I, I'm sorry? The, the media is showing some leaders rising, you know, into the... Uh... Yeah, I hope they do. I, hope, I really hope they do. I, I think the timing is excellent for this movement. It's raised awareness. Uh, it, whereas it started, say, in the beginning by, say, a fringe element, right. it's becoming more mainstream, I think. Uh, the protests, the Occupy, Occupy Boston, Occupy San Francisco, Occupy, you know, whatever, Rockland County. Uh, it's growing, and when mainstream America starts to join the movement, then hopefully it'll really right. turn into something that will, in the end, benefit all Americans and not just the rich. Right. And how do you see the, uh, the United States and the world? Well, I, I see the United States as becoming less and less of a democracy as we speak. It, it's, uh, it's, it's becoming an oligarchy uh, where you have the rich controlling our destiny and our votes aren't worth anything. Well, it's been like that for a while. It's getting worse. It's getting worse, especially since the Bush tax cuts for the rich. That it's just a total redistribution of wealth in America these days, which to me is immoral, and it should not be happening in our great country. The fact that I have to be sitting here talking to you today is a stain on our great country. It's, our country is not providing for everybody anymore. Right. I, and I'm a capitalist. Right. Okay. But, okay. That was but my next question. I'm a capitalist. I believe in America. I believe in the American dream. But right. there have to be rules. So according to you, the rules have been bent or broken? They're, they they have always been bent. Now they're broken and they've snapped. What would you do with uh, things like the APA and for uh, Obamacare? Uh, you know, I, I honestly don't fully understand Obamacare. That, that term, uh, the benefits, I, I really don't understand it, so I can't comment on that. So you still believe in government? I, believe, I absolutely believe in government, uh, and I think there, there, uh, regulations are needed for us to prosper. Absolutely. Uh, Wall Street and the financial industry is not Atlantic City. It's not Las Vegas. It's not the wild, wild west. There have to be rules. The, le the playing field has to be level for all of us to prosper. Okay. Uh, give us a corollary of everything you said so to, to close this interview. Oh boy, what would be uh, message? I, I, I would say campaign finance report, reform. Take the money out of the process. Get rid of the lobbyists. Get, oh, <laughs> get rid of lobbyists. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers. Did anybody ever tell you you look a little like Sean Hannity? No. No. <laughs> no, you look very presidential, you know. You need a little shaving, that's it. Well, Thank it's you. Sunday. <laughs> All right, thank you.
give you. That's probably the worst. Group. Yeah, uh, like I said before, uh, you know, we had uh, approached several people. Some people have voluntarily came to our camp, and uh, and then we uh, we walked and uh, talked to individuals to know their opinion. And uh, he's one of the gentlemen that we met before. He's a familiar face that has been with us side by side, oh, you know, proselytizing maybe in his cause. And we don't have a cause. We just want to bring the news the way it is. All right. So remember me. I'm Victor. How yes, are you? Hi, Victor. Nice to meet you again, what Ben. Was your, what ben. Was ben. How yes. are you, Ben? Great. So what uh, what are you doing here? Well, I'm here uh, doing doing a whole bunch of things. I, I, I came for... Um, Take for your time. So Take your time. Okay, I came for social justice. Um, I came for, for wealth distribution justice. Uh, specifically, what I've done here is um, I helped organize a march for homeless people uh, LGBTQ youth. Okay, so you, you're one of the ni uh, 99 percenters. Yes. Yes, I am. You do? You firmly believe in that? That I'm one of the 99 yes. percent? Yes. Sorry about that. Yes, I do. Uh -huh. And uh, what, what I did with the march was I, uh, it wasn't started by the Occupy Wall Street uh, movement, but through the movement we supported, uh, there's a queer caucus, we supported a, um, a rally in Union Square for homeless LGBTQ youth. Now, under the current administration this year, funding for homeless youth in this city has been cut 50%, by 50%, and then Governor Cuomo approved that. And I used to be a Democrat. I'm no longer going to consider I'm going to be independent now because I can't support things like that. The largest group, single group of youth that's homeless in this city are part of the LGBTQ community. Now they they need special places to uh, to be because if they go to regular shelters, they often get beat up, they get um, harassed, and they're the ones that are going to be affected most by the the funding cuts. So one of the things I'm most proud of by being here that I did uh, there have been many things is to help organize that. Good. Yeah, I, I remember you from uh, uh, from uh, from last week. And uh, how do you fend in yourself? Uh, are you uh, taking care of yourself? You're staying here overnight? Yeah, I have been. I have an apartment in Brooklyn, but I choose to not go to Brooklyn uh, because I feel so much more effective here. Uh, I choose not to go back to work, and if I like to go back to work, I can go back because I'm fortunate enough to work for a company who will take me back whenever I want to go. What do you do? I'm in catering. I bartended wait tables. So how do you uh, guys going to cope in the, in the most uh, lemonish questions right now? How are you going to cope with the winter comes sits in? We'll just keep adding more sleeping bags and tents and tarps and all sorts of things. Uh, it's worked so far. It gets, you know, cold at times with just layering up, you know. And, and there may be times where some of us might have the luxury of leaving for a day or two or even maybe the necessity but the movement's not going to end. In my how, how long have you been here? I've been here a month and a half with uh, a few days break. I went to Maryland at one point with somebody for just a few days. But so you've been here from almost the, uh, from the beginning, right? Almost. A couple of weeks before I think it started. So how, how do you think this uh, panning out? It's panning out wonderfully. There's already changes. There's changes occurring within the park. There's changes occurring in the world. Uh, one thing that I think you can't deny the movement has done, in particular, is uh, uh, news coverage of, uh, of wealth distribution is five times the amount it was prior to when the movement started. Okay, what's the solution? What's the solution? Uh, I, I don't have a solution right now other than to rethink everything, start from scratch. That would be my solution. Right, so you one of the 99 people that come here to demonstrate, but in reality don't don't have a solution, right? Why well, there are a lot of solutions. The solutions start from in ways that we know how to have the have the things happen, which includes funding for homeless youth. That's a start. Coverage of media. Those are starting points. Those are solutions. An end result solution, don't have one. So you believe in government control? Uh, do I believe in government control? Government control of what? Laws and bylaws and standards? Uh, I don't know. I, my mind is changing on that every day. I don't know. I, I, I Sometimes I feel that uh, government needs to control some things. Yes. 
uh, sometimes I, I, I'm, I'm becoming more and more anarchistic being here. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. We'll talk to you again next week. Okay. Okay. Here you go. What are they doing here? Yeah. They actually they are using the bicycles to charge up the computers and the electronics. No kidding. Yeah, that thing. Yes. Yeah. Oh. oh. Compost the same. They're using bicycles to charge yeah. computers. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> this is another thing. Set a specific date or time, right. but the Bible says uh, certain things are going to be happening. This newspaper was written 31, 32 years, 31 years ago. We basically made a synopsis of what the book said. It said that the whole world is going to be involved over an international controversy over who owns Jerusalem. That was written uh, in the Old Testament in the Bible. It also predicted that um, there's going to be a world economic collapse. Uh, right, and, and the lead articles in this newspaper is basically this. There's going to be a debt crisis beginning in Europe. It was written in that newspaper, the lead article. Wow. Then it also said that, you know what's going on with the Japanese? And this is the last trumpet, the last and trumpet, yeah. what, what's the issue? Well, there's only one issue. Oh, okay. That's it. It was written in 1980. It was okay. out of print for probably about 25 years. A friend of mine called us up, uh, and he said, listen, you should reprint that. Um, and we did. And we've distributed thousands of copies. It's available free. There's a website. What's the website, Victor? It is. It well, is. just type in Last Trumpet Info. And okay. the other... The other oh, uh, please. You have now some the reprints. Begins. Now, www.nowtheendsbegins.com. 
Okay. And they sent out free copies. Uh -huh. So when this man wrote the book, The Lake Ray Planet Earth, I read it. Uh, I was very impressed because, as a matter of fact, uh, it was at a, a college, and uh, the girl, uh, her roommate, said, you got to read this book. I went, got the book, went to the basketball game, came back, read the book, and he basically outlined then 10 things are going to be happening. There were predictions about Russia. See the main headline, Russia invades uh -huh. the Middle East? Yeah. In the Old Testament, it describes that Israel, would, after being twice destroyed, would again become a nation. They would again get Jerusalem back as a capital, and the whole world would be involved over a controversy over who owns the city of Jerusalem. It describes that Russia would be allied with, you could probably guess this, who's uh, one of Israel, uh, Russia's best buddies right now that, that, are, that are about to get nuclear weapons or may have nuclear weapons. Iran. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, would, yes. would, you, would you say that the leading history, uh, uh, the new, actually uh, headlines in this newspaper is now the economic collapse intending well it's happening you know the it's european right debt the european debt crisis right now what does pig stand for do we know we know what pig stands for yeah uh, portugal, portugal italy ireland spain uh, greece and spain greece and spain and what's italy's debt right now national debt i very I big i think it's 2.6 it trillion my, i've got it in my presentation 2.6 trillion it's yeah. really they're not doing so well so what happens when the world economy collapses the bible predicts that there's going to be a man coming called the antichrist and if you read revelation chapter 13 it says this no one would be able to buy or sell without a mark and right now you know what rfid chips are rfid yeah, chips like when you pull a tractor trailer into the loading dock at walmart you don't um you don't have to count anything this might be my son forgive me well, let me say this. Let me say this. In the meantime, 31 years ago, when the the, the paper was first yeah. printed, it just didn't make any sense, you know, that the United States would lose uh, supremacy, you know, as we're doing it right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, well, just one other quick thing. God made a covenant with the Jewish people. He said, "Those who bless you, I will bless. Those who curse you, I will curse." And right now, the whole world's involved over the epicenter, Jerusalem, and the Temple Mount. Uh -huh. And the Bible describes that. You heard of the term Armageddon? Absolutely. <laughs> you, know what that, you know biblically what that means? I would have had to have been living under a rock for the past 50 years to not have heard that. But biblically, do you, biblically, do you know what that means? Yes. What does it mean? It's the, it's the end times. The end times, yeah, the right. last battle, and it's all focusing on Jerusalem. Uh -huh. um, now, this is a little bit on the side, but your first name again is? Mike. Mike, do you remember my first name? Uh, no. Willie. Sorry, Willie. Willie. Mike, glad to meet you. <laughs> I, I, what cost my, look at this, this is really cool. He's got gold and silver. Yeah. Now, you know what it says in the last trumpet? It says gold and silver. Oh, it says gold has reached an all-time high. You have not seen anything yet. This is your business. Yeah. You have not seen anything yet because, as you were saying, governments are in the business of governments are not in the business of putting governments out of business, correct? They right. do anything to maintain power. Right. And to do that, we print a lot of money. And the gold is real. And people, uh, right. it, it'll have value. Now, this is on the side. My 34-year-old nephew, you look like you're healthy and good shape, but... Fifty years from now, you intend to be walking on this planet? I probably won't. My family usually does. Okay, that's live. fine. Men don't live that long. Okay, here's a quick question. <laughs> Mike, remember yeah. my first name again? Willie. Uh, Willie. Okay, shake hands again. Are you sure you're going to heaven? <laughs> my 34-year-old nephew. I'm sorry, guys. We have to get, yeah. we have to get running. I God do bless appreciate you. it. All right, man. We, um, we snagged the bike back from you, though. You got it. Where is it? How do you get all these assistants? Look at this. I like it. So, where, where are your tangles? Can I overturn them? Well, we're not money changing. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, what's it doing? What's it doing? Where's your tangles? Where's my tangles? Where's my tangles? 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 How you doing? We're going to Brooklyn now to the site. We're going to Brooklyn now to the site. To put our foot down. To put our foot down. And say we do not agree with racism and anti-Semitism. We do not agree with racism and anti-Semitism. We are leaving now. Join us. We are leaving now. Join us. I'm sorry, you can't go to what? Midwest. Where they were burning cars. No, and, 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 and riding swastikas. Who do you really work for? The last one been in the news. We, we are the National Network. I met you before here. Remember that? Wait a minute. The last trumpet is based not in Oakland. No, no. So you don't, you don't believe in the apocalypse? Of course. 
Of course. So, uh, yeah, was that, what was your name again? Jeff Bob. Jeff Bob Shrine. Victor Castleton with The Last Trumpet. Nice to meet you. And um, I was asking you, what, what are you doing here? What is your uh, position? Jesus, you Jesus would be here right now. Okay. Yeah, he's not paying attention. Jesus would be here right now because Jesus understood the problem. The problem was, the problem was the people who control the Pharisees. The Pharisees. We are here because the Pharisees are in control, all right? There's a spiritual aspect to what's going on here. And that's why we're here. And I, I actually, I, I'm, I was raised in an extremely conservative Lutheran Presbyterian home. My ancestors were Mennonite Germans who came here to escape persecution from the Catholic Church, which right. is an evil cult. The Catholic Church is an evil cult, and I know that even today, because Penn State is, yes, they're all, everybody involved is Catholic in Penn State. Uh, here, take this. Um, we're here for justice. We're here for economic justice, and Jesus understood economic, economic justice. What did he tell us over and over and over again? He said, to give up your worldly goods, to help each other, to give, if you had something, share it and give. And he said it over and over and over again. And today's modern Christians are, are that you can be, that you can call yourself a Republican. My two brothers in Lincoln, Nebraska are born again Christians and they're conservative and they vote Republican. And uh, they're, they're not the worst Christians in the world, but I disagree with them. Right, but the Bible says you must be born again. Don't you believe that? Fine. And after you're born again, help the poor, help others, give yeah, health care. That's healthcare. a given. That's a given. So right. don't vote Republican. If you vote Republican, you are an evil f Christian and you should f die. Okay? How's that? Okay, that's your take. No. It's, it's been that's the truth. That's right. the truth. The truth is the Republicans have hijacked the Christian movement in this country over abortion. They couldn't care less about abortion because as soon as a baby is born, they just as soon have no health care and it could die. And especially if it's black, they couldn't care less. And that's why Mississippi voted against the pro-life amendment because they were afraid of more black babies. Oh my God, have you been to Mississippi? No, I haven't, no. I believe that, I believe that. So. Uh... How would you uh, propose a solution to this, you know? Uh, Follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. How's that? Okay, would you Amen, think that... Brother. All right. I, I have a question. I have a question. Because I believe in following the teachings of Jesus Christ. All right. Do you believe... Uh, I do believe that it is the, the, uh, people of God's, the people of God's responsibility to help the homeless. But and people without health care. People without health care. Did, did he, anybody, did he, anybody did non the lepers? Did he help the Absolutely lepers? Absolutely non discriminatory. Okay. Absolutely. I agree. 100%. He was not a capitalist. He was the first socialist on earth. Oh, no, that's not true. But anyway. Oh, no. He didn't say give up all your worldly goods and share everything. No. Jesus did not say give up everything and share everything. He never said that. Did he ever say that? Can I ask you a question? I'm just, I ask just want to ask, a, a ask me a Republican question. Go ahead. I'm not asking a Republican question. No, I believe it. I'm asking you a simple question. Why? Did Jesus teach that it's the responsibility of the government? For example, he was in a time of oh, the Roman don't government. Give me this crap. Did he teach? This is crap. This is evil propaganda and it's I'm, crap. All I'm doing give is asking Caesar, an innocent give question. Give Caesar what is Caesar's. That's right. That's give right. the power. Thank you. Give the power. The power. I know which side you're on. I know exactly which side you're on. You are part of the evil cult that controls this country. Wake up. Wake up. Christianity has been hijacked by capitalists, by Ayn Rand, by Alan Greenspan, who, oh, by the way, Ayn Rand and Alan Greenspan happen to be not Christians. Oh, thank you. Up. Thank you. Wake so up. How do you connect the dots together? How do you how do you connect the dots then if they're not Christians? They cannot speak in for the Christians though. Speak for yourself. Right here. Now, my brother and I read the book back over 30 years ago. Then we wrote this, okay, as a draft of what they say is gonna happen now. You'll find it interesting. Can you hear me in the red notebook right here? Yep. 
you're going to find it interesting because in the note, in the uh, in the newspaper, you'll see a European debt crisis. Yeah. Japan trying to devalue the yen. Yeah. The nations of the world trying to divide Jerusalem. I ran for it in Israel. That's on the news. That's on the news. That's exactly now. Exactly now. The headline: Russian banks in East. It shows you the entire thing was predicted by the ancient Hebrew prophets. Now, Ezekiel chapter 37 talks about the resurrection of Israel from the graveyard of the nations. Okay. Recently, a very profound thing happened. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu visited Auschwitz, the death camp, and you know what he read? Ezekiel chapter 37 in front of the whole world. A prediction about the rebirth of Israel. Yeah. Okay. From the graveyard of the nations and the Holocaust. The vision of the Holocaust in Ezekiel 37. Guess what? 37 is Israel, 38 39 talks about Israel's northernmost enemy, allied with ancient Persia. Oh my gosh. Against Israel. Now, the creator of the universe, we believe, is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He has an eternal covenant with Israel. He's going to protect Israel. Russia and Iran are not going to take out for it. An attack against Israel. A fatal attack for them, not for Israel. Okay, now, now, one last exciting thing. Now, after my brother and I wrote this newspaper, we started seeing newspaper articles came out. It said the exact same thing on the exact same subject in the exact same words. Now, let me give you one little example. There's 30 of them, not just one. There's 30 of them. Now, this is what you're going to be reading. See right here? 30 years ago, Europeans United, my first president. You're going to be reading from 30 years ago. Now, European Unite, this is 1991. European Union ratified a constitution, ratification of a constitution, guaranteeing security, guaranteeing security. Now, we wrote the article in Brussels, Belgium. Now, what's my reaction when I'm sitting in the New York Times? On the 20th, from Brussels, European Union vote to create a permanent president. But 30 different articles that say the exact same thing. Now, there's no group to join. It's not the end of the world. An incredibly optimistic outcome. But between now and then, there's a lot of Holocaust coming that's going to make what happened in World War II look like a prosperous war party. Now, it's interesting. Right here, we have the global economy collapses, yeah. paper currency becoming worthless. We're heading for a global monetary system where if you want that cup of, cup of coffee, you're going to need a barcode or a check. Oh, oh that's a sound yeah, good. So you get the point? Now, how do you figure this whole thing out? You have a copy of the newspaper. Yes. I gave it to you, right? Yeah. Okay, you see the reprint. It's 1980. Okay, now, how do we really know it's 1980? Well, let's see. Here's some original pictures. Now, I'm 56, and I came into New York City to buy. These are the original pictures. And here is some orders from 1980. Some water blank and some orders from 1980. Okay? And here are some, you know, people mail this. What's the nature of this message? Well, the message is this, okay? God, the architect of the angels, has seen fit to take us into his confidence concerning his plan for the future. Well, I'm not religious. Do I believe the Bible is the word of God? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So God, the architect of the ages, has seen fit to take us into his confidence concerning his plan for the future and has revealed that plan to the ancient Hebrew prophets. He revealed it to us. And now we're catching on. I can't tell you how many people I gave the newspaper to that are electrified, they know what's happening in sequence of absolute fact. You know what I'm saying? So keep in mind, optimistic, no one can enjoy it. And guess what? You like me the newspaper? I'm sure that that was not an obvious thing. I'm sure that was an obvious thing. I'm sure that was an obvious thing. Oh my gosh, I knew that was going to happen. Now, I'll leave you with a rhetorical question. Okay. Just recently, okay, Turkey had a problem with Israel, with the Gaza vote war. Now, within a week or so, Egypt had a problem with the embassy, the Israeli embassy in Cairo. Israel had a flying military personnel to extract their embassy. Personal. The question is, was I to a best surprise? In one week, Israel, Turkey down the tubes, Egypt, Israel down the tubes. Oh, I was completely caught by surprise. Yeah, I don't think so. It, 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 was I surprised by the fact that the whole world's ganging up and Israel trying to divide? Oh, thanks. And they want Israel You're okay. To I'm, I'm looking at the last trumpet. Yeah. First Corinthians 15, 52. Take it. Thank you. Yes, sir. It's very interesting. Now we have a little post office box. Yeah, sure. Very pro Israel. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, very Yes. Pro yep. Be more pro Israel. Do you know where that prophecy is of Egypt? What's that? The prophecy of Egypt?
universal health care is achieved for every American. Does anybody else have anything to say? My name's yeah, Michael O'Brien. I'm a poet from Cincinnati. Let's hear a poem. Yeah, All right, on. here's one. Here. Here's one for you guys. Yeah, yeah. This one's just for you. Strapped in a fiberglass container rolling slowly east on an asphalt track, I trek. The harmony of honking horns screaming my head straight, and I'm in such a hurry to prostitute myself, my time, and my effort for another daily allowance of chocolate-covered dollars. A recurring act I perform so many times I no longer need to think it to accomplish. A torture that runs more naturally through my brain than does the lifeblood which keeps me sustained. I pull my vehicle into its designated spot, pull out my card to punch my clock. My bosses all say I'm one hell of a robot, see everything's efficiency, cut costs, raise production in the assembly line of society. My loyal devotion might yield promotion, while I'm a capital locomotive making profits for gods in offices gleaming with wall-to-wall -wall carpeting and white teeth spreading dishonest smiles with knives and palms for backstabbing. Still everyone knows it's all in jest. Society has taught us only the rich are the best. Yet when one more letter says it must be done better, why well, look to that door on the near side of freedom and I promise, just one more day and I'll walk away. I'll leave this institution to rot and decay and I'll finally be free. With the western wind carrying my soul, I'll rise above smog and factory spit to soar with angels above silver lined clouds on the hot grass of the prairie. I'll run with the coyote, listening to songs of nature, living to sing them to the moon. I promise, just one more day, tomorrow but tomorrow never comes. Thank you. Man, I, I, gotta, I gotta give you a hand.